In today's project, we're going to take this boring brown 1970s mirror and make it boho fabulous with a little terra clay paint and some patina paint. Make sure to stay to the end to see the final results. Well, hello, hello, and welcome, Dixie Bell Paint fans. How are you today? It is Melissa from the Top Drawer VA coming to you live because it is 3 p.m. and I am live here every Wednesday at 3 p.m. to sit on the floor, literally, and play with some paint. So welcome. If you are new, joining me for the first time, I'd love it if you dropped it in the comments below. And if you're back again to hang out with me, then welcome back. Welcome back. We have a new project today, and I literally just went in the shed today to find it because working on a ton of stuff and nothing that is able to be <laughs> filmed today. So we're, we're working with what we got. I went out in the she shed. Actually, if you wanna go over to my Instagram, you can follow my stories where I, I dove through all the stuff and picked a piece to paint today. And I found a perfect project for today. This is a 1970s style mirror and I've taken the mirror out and I just have the frame. It's really long actually. And whenever I get these scrolly 1970s style mirrors, I love to paint them um, kind of boho, drippy, and we are going to play with terra clay paint today because terra clay paint is my go-to paint for anything drippy, boho, and blue because they have the best blues. So if you have never seen terra before, terra is a clay-based paint. Dixie Bell makes terra clay paint. It's kind of like the newest to the newest of the new, and it is available in 18 beautiful colors. Now these colors are all really kind of heavy, pudding like paint okay when i talk about terra clay paint i want you to think about how different it is than regular paint regular paint is kind of a little bit more smooth a little bit more viscous this is definitely thicker more opaque and it is a clay based product with high pigment and i absolutely love it it's one of my most favorite paints to use when painting with terra you can use water to distress and pull back and show what's underneath you can add layers and sand them and pull it back i basically just create a big giant beautiful mess and and with Tara you can totally do this too now I've got this mirror laying on its side this mirror frame because of the fact that it's like five feet long and if I pick it up and put it straight up and down I'll never be able to let you follow straight up from down to the bottom so I thought I can like shift it back and forth kind of in this way and we can get it done together so you guys want to play with some Tara let's create a beautiful boho blue mirror on the floor I do have open a number of terra clay paints. I will tell them to you as I am going along so that you can follow along on this little journey as well and see what I am up to. And as always, if I miss your comment when I'm doing a lot of this and a lot of this, I'll come back in and follow it afterwards and make sure that I can see what everybody's up to. All right, you can also follow me across all social media channels at the Top Drawer RVA. I post daily on TikTok, daily on Instagram, and weekly on YouTube. All right, let's begin. So what is this? This is, um, this is a really, funky frame. <laughs> you like my patch job on the back there? So I actually took the backing off of this mirror so that I could take it out. Um, and these mirrors are, are plastic. Nine times out of 10, they're always plastic. And this little piece up here was wood. So I glued it down and put it back in its little space here because it fell out when I took the backing off. I've just given it a little clean with white lightning and we're just going to paint right over top of this plastic. I feel like if this was a dresser and this is plastic, I would be using the new bonding boss to ensure that my paint would stick. But since this is a mirror and people aren't really gonna touch it, right? Either gonna hang it on the wall or lean it against the wall. And it's not really a heavy duty touchy thing. I'm fairly confident that my paint will stick. And this is Terra. Terra is a really good adhesive paint. It, it sticks pretty much to everything, metal, plastic, wood. Um, so I'm going to leave it like it is without doing any extra prep to this piece. So we're gonna start here on this little panel. Let's talk about what we're gonna do. I want drippy, I want runs, I want boho blue. I might even come in here after it dries tonight and spray the heck out of it and add some patina because I love rusty crusty with blue mixed together. It's always beautiful. Let's get in here and add our paint. I'm gonna start with the darks, okay? I'm gonna go in with um, a darker color. We're gonna start with Onyx. Onyx is black. It is the darkest of the terra clay paint colors. So I'm gonna come in here with Onyx so that I can get it to sit inside of some of these crevices. Um, and we're gonna heat gun it a little bit. We're gonna dry our paint as we work because this paint is thick, right? It's a thick, chunky paint. And if I were to just leave it and start painting right over top of it, then what's gonna happen is it's, it's not going to dry as fast as I would want it to. So I'm gonna come in here with my onyx and start to put some black deep down here in these kind of scrolly crevices 
to kind of be like a accent. So when I start to spray and pull things back, this black is gonna stay in all of the grooves and provide me almost like a reverse shading, if it makes sense. Sometimes you would come in here and you would paint the whole thing and then you come back in and add wax in the crevices and make those areas darker. I'm, I'm gonna go backwards. We're gonna start with the dark and we're gonna move our way into the light. All right, so this is Terra. I'm just gonna apply it with a chip brush. A chip brush or my French tip are my most favorite ways to apply Terra clay paint. And it really gets the job done easily and well. I like to kind of be a little, oh, that just fell on the floor <laughs> after I just cleaned my whole entire floor the other day. Boo hiss. Let's wipe it up while it's still, uh, still a little wet. Uh, hey, if it does get on your floor though, this is reactivated by water. You can easily spray it. Um, and when you spray it, you're able to get it off. It comes off quite easily. Actually, I get Terra in my clothes all the time and it washes out better than majority of the paint that I'm using because let me tell you, sometimes you get silk paint on your clothes. It's never coming off. It's never coming off. So I'm going to get this darker black in here in the crevices. And I kept the backing of the mirror just sitting back here to kind of protect um, some of the, the piece that's sitting behind me. The piece behind me here is actually being prepped with bonding boss and it is waiting on paint. When you're using the new bonding boss, you do need to wait approximately 24 hours before you start to paint to make sure that your paint will adhere well. All right, so now we have on my black, black onyx. Let's move my coffee out of the way, put the spray bottle over here and bring you in nice and close so that you can see what is happening. Good morning, hello. All right, let's heat it up. Let's get it dry. Because I want this to sit in the crevices, right? I don't want to come in here with my blue and mess it all up. I want this black to be fairly dry before we start in with the next part of our project. So how did everybody fare in the uh, the storms on the East Coast yesterday? I'm located in Richmond, Virginia. We did not be so hot over here. We have leaks. We have roof leaks. So we had roofers come today. They're going to come the rest of the week. Hopefully I don't need a whole new roof, just a patch of the roof, but hey, I can't fix it with a paintbrush, so i got to hire that part of my business out. But a little bit of water never hurt anybody. We will just deal with it as we go along, right? All right, so there's my onyx. It's been dried, so now I can come in here and start to add another color. Let's grab another brush. And let's go into a beautiful blue, my favorite blue from the Terra Clay paint line. This is London Blue. London Blue is super delicious. I really, really, really like it. I actually have two containers of it on the floor because I have a small little one that I need to use up. So I'm gonna apply my Terra in a couple different ways. You'll see me wiping. You'll see me going back and forth. There is no rhyme or reason when it comes to Terra. I actually would much rather stipple it on and create texture where there really wasn't any texture before. So when you see me stippling versus brushing, it's just to create texture. That's all I'm doing. When Terra dries, it keeps that texture. So when you're painting over top of something like this, you're able to keep those little peaks and valleys and uh, create some delicious, fun boho look. So that over top of the black onyx is London Blue. And I'm probably gonna have to pick up this mirror to make sure that I get it all along the base here, all along the edges of this frame. Remember this frame is plastic, it's not heavy. It's a light frame, but it is plastic. So my plan is, let's get the whole thing painted, tip it up, and then put some of that beautiful bright green on it. The green is pistachio, it is my favorite green from the Dixie Belle Paint Mineral Lines and I uh, really love to drip it and run it down. So let's kind of get this base of the darker colors up here. Again, your call if you want to stipple or if you want to brush it. I'm just going to start to layer on some of these blues. I really like that blue though. Isn't that a pretty blue? Can you see how true and blue that is? So pretty, such pretty color. I'm going to keep the same brush and I'm going to grab some of the malachite. Malachite is a green color. It's, it's going to be similar to what I'm putting on here, but I just kind of want to go around some of the bottom parts of this scrolly bits. We're getting technical with the terms here, the scrolly bits. And the colors are going to blend together a little bit because this is still damp, right? Well, clay paint is damp. You are able to blend. It is probably the easiest way to blend your paint 
when it comes to mixing, you can blend Terra so well. It, it's honestly, until you try Terra, you're not even gonna understand how amazing this paint is. This paint is available in four ounce container sizes. So you can get in here and try a bunch of the colors. I do recommend if you're moving into trying Terra that you would stick to say maybe some of the neutrals. I would buy like three, Desert Tan, Prairie Dawn, and Onyx, or Galaxy, Pistachio, and Malachite. See what I mean? Staying within that color family is really gonna help you be able to blend these colors very easily together. All right, let's switch it up and go to that French tip. This is Cerulean Blue. Let's kind of just start to stipple some of this blue on here. I'm gonna to start to even get some of it up here on the edges. Layer. You know it looks like a hot mess express right now? Trust the process. You have to trust the process. There is a method behind my madness all the time. I know these things. I do it the same way every time and people always look at me like she has lost her mind when it comes to the layers and the crazy that she's doing. Yeah, I like a little bit of the crazy. It's fun. What would life be? Boring, if you weren't just a little bit daring. Let's go back into some of that blue and get rid of some of this. There, okay, so now we're gonna hit this with the heat gun. And I'm gonna start to dry this area that I worked on. And when you see it dry, you're gonna start to see it change colors a little bit. It's gonna, it's gonna lighten up some in value because when this paint is wet, it holds the pigment so well, it, it is quite dark. But when it starts to dry, you're gonna see it lightening up more and more and more. So that we've got this lighter underneath here. I'm gonna come back in. I'm gonna to start to dry brush to make these details really pop. All right, while this is drying, let's bring our little uh, conveyor belt frame down some. I put it on wheels, even though it's not heavy, just so that we can work on these sections, section to section. I'm gonna keep the same brush, and we're gonna go back into that London blue, and just make sure that I've got all the interior edges of my mirror covered, so that when I start to drip the paint, I don't have to worry about going back in and covering any wood. If you're watching and you've tried tear clay paint before, do you love it? Do you love it like I do? I use it a lot. I, if you ask me, out of the three paint lines that Dixie Belle has, because we have three, right? We have our, where'd that brush go? Seriously, I had a brush. We have silk mineral paint, which is a built-in top coat, all-in-one primer, top coat, and paint. There it is. I knew I had a brush down here. I'm like, it had to be somewhere. We have Terra, which is our clay-based paint, and then we also have our regular OG chalk mineral paint which is the one that we have the most colors in. Did you all hear the news that Silk all in Mineral Paint has seven brand new colors? If you get a chance, head on over to Instagram. Tracy's Fancy is doing a giveaway this week. I'll be doing a giveaway as well, but it won't be till the end of the month. If you'd like a chance to try and win the new Silk Paint colors, it's called the National Park Palette, and they are bold and beautiful and so gorgeous. So gorgeous. I think they are going to be a hot big seller, to be honest, I really do. I think that um, this new color palette is going to be a hit. All right, yeah, so go check out Tracy's Fancy on Instagram and check her out with her giveaway this week. And then next week there'll be somebody else doing a giveaway and so on and so on and so on, all the way down the line for the whole month of January. So I am mixing shades of Terra basically just getting this on here so that I can get it on and get it dry. Once I get it on and get it dry, I'm going to be able to dry brush a little bit more over top of my frame. And again, the colors that I'm using are cerulean blue mixed in with the London blue, mixed in with a little bit of the malachite, which is that dark green that you're seeing. And I'm gonna add some of the gorgeous, gorgeous, um, beautiful green called pistachio near the end of this. So for the bottom part down here, I'm actually gonna go kind of a little bit more heavy with the cerulean blue. I feel like I want kind of like a balance when I put the mirror back in, I wanna be able to see a contrast between the dark sides, the lighter base, 
And then of course, if I choose to come in later on and add um, all of that gorgeous patina, copper patina, it will be perfection. All right, let's see. So I've got my plastic mirror here. Let me get the other side and then bring it back to the top section right here. So we're, this is where we're gonna work on right now. We're gonna concentrate over here. How's the angle? You all can see quite well. All right, so now that this is here, let's blast it with the heat gun. Just make sure you dried it all up. Now I want to do some paint dripping. So what we're gonna do is very carefully, I'm gonna turn this frame. I'm gonna try and put it straight up and then we're gonna bring my little stoolie stool over here so I can have a little seat. Um, because when I'm spraying it, I want my runs to run the length of the mirror, makes sense? I don't want my runs to come this way, I don't want them to come this way. I could flip it upside down, but even then I feel like the runs might be just going the wrong way. I wanna put the stuff on the top and let it run down. So let's back you up a little bit and aim you up a little bit more and see if we can get this in the proper position for what I need to do without it falling over. This is gonna be dicey. Dicey move, y'all. Dicey move. I think I will be okay. I think right now I'm just gonna concentrate on finishing on the side of this piece because there's kind of like an edge that I didn't really get to when it was laying on my wheels. There we go. All right, now let me aim you back up and start to focus on the top part of this mirror. And I'm gonna scooch myself up as well. Nobody's fallen, I shouldn't jinx myself. I could. <laughs> Do you know I've fallen on camera before? That's entertaining. It's always entertaining to fall when you're on camera, right? Not so much. Okay, so we have the top of my mirror. We have a mix of different shades of blue, right? How are we doing? Can we still see? Let's see, that's even better even better. Let me take what's on my brush, make sure, oh, my little panel's getting loose. Make sure I'm getting into all these edges so that I've got all the wood covered. Oh, of course, of course, it falls off. I might have to clip it. I might have to clip it. Because it's sitting in like an inset panel and I taped it. But this is telling me my tape is not strong enough. Maybe I can just hold it from behind. Let's start to cover up some of this blue with some darker blue. So I'm gonna to start to spray, and we're gonna to start to move. This means I'm gonna get very messy, especially if I'm holding the mirror. Let's start to spray. I'm even gonna probably grab some onyx, which is the black, and we're gonna to start to spray it and drip it and move it down this mirror. All right, let me grab some of the onyx, which is black, same brush. Put that here, put that here, put that here even up here. Okay, now we have a spray misting bottle filled with water and I'm just gonna start to move my chalk mineral paint now. This Terra paint is kind of movable with water. We're gonna create runs and drips where we didn't have any before. We're gonna start to move this paint. Let's start to blend a little bit and create a really boho look. Bring some of this onyx up and down. And then I'm gonna grab my pistachio. So I'm covering up the layers. You could take a wet rag and start to pull it back if you wish. By pulling it with a wet rag, you're able to build those layers. But I just want to drip it and move it and make some of this paint travel. You can also get in here and use your fingers if you want. You can pat it with a napkin, however you want to create it. I don't mind any wood peeking through because we're gonna go and bring this really boho look back to basics. I might even get out some gold later on and do a little bit of a stencil motif on here as well. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. I do see a hair. How can I get that hair off? Come on, I'm gonna have to use my brush. Did I get it? It's not even a puppy dog hair, it's my hair. 
So now we're creating a little boho drippy look and I'm going to grab my pistachio, which is that really beautiful green. Oh my gosh, the look at the glare, that's not good. How can I do this so you're not gonna get a glare? There we go, there we go, back in business. So I'm gonna grab the pistachio and I'm going to start to put it up here and hit some of these edges and then we're gonna spray it, tap it and move it. And let's show you what's happening. Okay, so we've got that, we've got our water. Let's spray it so it drips down, it creates some beautiful runs, some beautiful aged kind of patina looking paint. By just touching and moving it, dragging it, reactivating it. It's gonna run all the way down the edges of this mirror. We're gonna get a beautiful boho look. See that? And when this dries, what's gonna happen is it's actually going to lighten even more in value. Let's put some in the middle. Spraying it so when it runs down, it's going to go sit in all of these crevices. See how it's running down and creating so beautiful, beautiful runs. We're going to get drippy and boho in here. It's coming down the sides. And making a hot mess on my floor, but that's okay. It is marked off on the floor. See that? That's what I want to happen. I want it to look weathered. I want it to look totally bohemian, free flowing, beautiful colors mixed in together. This is the point of actually what I'm doing. I don't want you to look at it and go, well, that looks like a crazy hot mess. I want you to actually follow along on my painting journey at the Top Drawer RVA on Facebook. And when this piece is done, you will see how cool it looks. But can you see how that runs down the sides down here? Let me turn the camera a little bit. See how it's coming down and running down and creating really pretty boho blood drips? It's actually coming all the way down. Remember this mirror is almost, what, four feet tall? I really like the way that looks. Let's dry it a little bit so you can understand a little bit more about how it's gonna look when it gets dry. So the pistachio is a very bright green. And by spraying it, you're moving it and causing these gorgeous runs so that when it does get dry, it looks almost like a watercolor. It looks like a watercolor piece of art. And I'll do the same thing to the other side as well, creating beautiful drips and runs, pushing that water. Actually, I'm going to put more up here in the crevice in the corner so that it comes down all up in here in this little edge. But there's always a lot of water involved when I use Terra. There's always a lot of drips. There's always a lot of age. Can you imagine this beautiful blue with patina paint and actual rust? It's going to be gorgeous. If you haven't used patina paint before, patina paint has literal metal inside of it. And when you actually apply your spray to the patina paint, it does really rust and crust and looks entirely different. Can you see that beautiful look right there? Can you see how gorgeous that is? So when this dries, it turns into a watercolor portrait. It becomes very, very deep. The edges will stay dark where I put in that darker onyx and that darker blue. The beautiful green is going to run all the way down, all the way down this mirror. Remember, this is literally a plastic frame. It's a plastic frame. So you're creating a piece of art from plastic. Once I do seal it, and when you use Terra, you can use Terra Tough, or you can use Terra Matte, which is a matte finish, and all of these colors are just gonna stay so beautiful and so vibrant, but that beautiful texture, that beautiful patina, this is what I'm going for. I want it to look old, and I want it to look worn out and rustic. So stay tuned, trust me, there is a method behind the madness. I know you guys are looking at this right now going, hmm, 
Not really sure what this girl is up to. There's always a method behind the madness. I see Patty watching as Patty. She trusts me, right Patty? <laughs> there is always a plan. And I've actually done this similar style of mirror many, many times. Um, and it always flies out the door because people really love to have like a, a watercolor masterpiece. Think Monet, think like those watercolor lilies. Think drippy, beautiful blue runs. I'm gonna get in here and add even more because I just love the way that this happens. It's so pretty. I really wanna hold it so that you guys can see without that glare. It's so hard to film and paint at the same time. Let's spray it some more. Let's make some more beautiful runs and drips. You can get in here with your finger. You can get in here with the sponge. Heck, use a spatula, use a piece of paper towel. This is what I want to happen. See that beautiful drip and run? This is where the magic starts to, to go. And listen, there's no clean in painting with Tara. Tara is messy. It's an artisan paint. It is so much fun. And I know once you try it, you're never gonna look back because you are just gonna realize how much fun it is. I might even lay it down flat and get some of this green to sit in. Can you see how beautifully that goes? This is what we're doing. This is the whole point of spraying and dripping and running and creating this boho look. I hope that you try it. I think you will really like it if you do. Remembering that the Terra comes in those four ounce sizes, perfect for crafting, perfect for trying new colors, and perfect for playing with your paint. And stay tuned, because this is not gonna be done for a while. We gotta let it get dry, and then we're gonna get rusty and crusty. And don't worry, I'll film the whole thing. Anything that I, you, that I do here or that you see me start can always be found um, at the Top Drawer RBA on all social media channels, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. We are all over the place teaching you fun things to do with paint every single day. And trust me, there is something fun to do with paint every single day. I promise, I promise. So once again, Terra Clay Paint, available in 18 beautiful, vibrant colors. You can create these beautiful, drippy, boho looks. The magic is happening. Once this gets dry, you're able to seal it, add some patina. I might even get out my yellow. I almost just touch my face. Wouldn't that be lovely? <laughs> might get out my yellow. Um, there's a beautiful yellow in the patina line that might just accent this blue perfectly. But I'm gonna get in here and touch all the edges too with gilding wax and gold and all the fun things. Nothing I do is ever plain, boring, or basic. We are gonna get crafty over here. We're gonna make a mess and we're gonna have fun doing it. So I will see you next Wednesday at 3 p.m. Stay tuned for the final look on this gorgeous 1970s plastic, plastic mirror. And we're going to take it to like under the sea, boho beautiful. And she's going to be a lot of fun, I promise. Take care everybody, have a great day. Okay, so what's next in my little mirror project? Well, I've laid it flat onto the ground, onto a mat, where I will be applying now two types of paint. And if you've never tried patina paint, you should totally try it. It's a lot of fun. This is patina paint in copper and patina paint in iron. And they both do different things according to what spray you use. So today I will be using the patina spray in green, and I'm gonna show you exactly what happens when you try this product. Okay, so it's very simple. These paints have metal in them, and when you shake them very, very well, I mean like, I even store them upside down to make sure that the metal is well dispersed. And you use a throwaway brush because you don't really wanna be washing this down your drain. Um, you're going to apply the patina paint and iron. And when you use the green spray, you're going to get rust. And I'm gonna show you exactly the color rust you're gonna get. And when you use the copper spray, you're going to get green patina. So it's gonna take the copper color and change it to green, and then the iron color and change it to rust. So once upon a time, I made this really great little board to show you exactly what happens when you use these products, okay? So this is the iron color right here in the middle, natural, not sprayed. This side is the blue spray, this side is the green spray. Can you see the actual rust that starts to happen? This is like my freaking dream. I love, I love using this product because it gives you such a different look every time depending on what you put it on top of and rust color plus blue equals fabulous. So then here we have the patina in copper. So you can see the natural in the middle. This is the copper with the blue spray. This is a copper with the green spray. And this is what we're gonna achieve today. We're gonna mix these two together on the mirror. Um, I'm going to apply the paint first and then well wet, spray it liberally with the spray. 
And FYI, friends, it does stink. <laughs> it smells. So this spray actually has vinegar in it. And when you spray it, it just stinks. So open your window, make sure you're in a well-ventilated area and you will be fine. And this does not happen very quickly either. Just so you know, this is something that's going to take a little while to achieve. I can hear little puppy dog feet coming in here. Hi, Stella. You can come over here, honey, and have a look-see. Here she comes, my little shop dogs. So we're gonna spray it while wet and then wait for the action to happen. It will continue changing until this part is completely dry. Once this is dry, you're going to have your rusted out, crusty looking mirror and you can seal it with clear coat or patina guard. It's up to you. Okay, so it's been approximately four hours now since I painted this little mirror frame and we are ready to get in here and add our patina paint. When you purchase your patina spray, it does come with a small nozzle like this. I do recommend rinsing out that nozzle after use so it does not become clogged because you're not going to use your whole bottle today. You're only going to be using a tiny bit of that spray. So rinse out the nozzle after you're finished and you will have it for next time. I'm going to start in with the iron color of patina paint. Now you'll see me kind of stippling it on and that is to create texture on texture. If you were to gently brush it on, you're going to see brush marks when you spray it and you're going to see kind of like a smooth surface. I don't want that. I want rusty and crusty and chunky and textured. So I'm going to gently stipple on this color and then use a separate brush for the copper and do the same thing. My plan is to use more of the iron because I want more rust versus the copper patina. So you can apply as much as you like, but do remember you do have to spray it while this is still wet. There are three colors of patina colored paint as well as three different colors of spray. So you can mix and match them. You can use them all in the same project or you can use them one at a time. It's up to you. I do have a couple different videos here on my YouTube that show you the process of applying the patina and spraying and what it does. But it's really unpredictable, I'm not gonna lie. It, it kind of travels a bit and when you lay your piece flat like this and you spray it, I leave the excess spray kind of pooling on the top of my mirror, on the top of the frame that I'm working on. Because the longer it stays wet and the longer it's like soaking into that paint, the more true orange rust and crust you're going to get for your project. So here you see me spraying liberally, like you want it soaking, sopping wet. Um, because if it's not wet, it's not going to activate. And you do need to remember that you need to really, really shake or stir your paint cans before you begin. If you were to not do that, you're not gonna get the activation happening. So here's a couple different slides of the activation starting to happen. I actually let it sit for almost 24 hours before I decide that it's done. So once it is dry and it is done and you're ready, you can seal it with patina guard or you can seal it with a clear coat. I use clear coat and then I came in with my gilding wax to accent all of the little corners and edges. This is just gonna give it a tiny bit more shine. So after I was done adding that cute little shine, I just put the backing back on and FYI, I flipped it. I flipped the backing because it was kind of stained and dirty on the other side. So by turning it around, you're hiding those stains and marks. And then we were finished. My rusty, crusty 1970s style mirror is done. I absolutely love it. I've done the same look on different mirrors probably five, six, seven times, and they always just fly out the door. People love a strong accent piece for a room decor. You can really see how well all of those colors blend together. The copper has turned green and the iron has turned into that beautiful red colored rust. I did it kind of on the top section really heavy and then I did it on the base section heavy, leaving the middle somewhat open. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time.